Episode three. We have the reveal. JP and Taylor. Oh my god. <laughs> Sugar bed. It's cute. It is okay. It's all cute. I have no complaints. Their reveal felt very genuine to me because they seemed really excited. Feel it. Feel my heart. Can you feel it? Yeah. This is so exciting. I know. We made it. I know. We did it. My sugar butt. My sugar. <laughs> yeah. But it was also awkward, and I'm like, yeah, it would be awkward oh, the first of time it would you be see so each other. Awkward. But yeah. I mean. I'm sure if I got engaged to someone through a wall, it would be awkward no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, imagine getting engaged over the internet and then you meet at the airport. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a little bit of like, oh, huh, oh how do we, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. I think they're going to figure it out. I have, I have, uh, I feel optimistic about that couple. Um, uh, <laughs> cut to like episode five and they're at each other's throats. They're probably, probably like but... screaming, like throwing <laughs> champagne bottles in Mexico. Yeah. And we're like, they're so cute. <laughs> Anyway, they're cute now, and that's that's great. Yeah. And the thing I said after is, like, I do want all of these women to find love. I'm still not sure about Izzy and Stacey as a couple, but I want her to find love. I Yeah, I agree. Um, uh, she writes a poem. <laughs> Did you did you clock that? Uh. Yeah. Although I feel like, well, I I don't remember when that happens. Sometime in this episode, but yeah, I like her. I just feel like he is looking for more vulnerability, and she's pushing back against that. And so I don't know if they're gonna meet in the middle. I wrote a really bad poem. Do you want to read it? <laughs> Izzy, oh Izzy, the words you say sometimes put me in a tizzy. So much so I need a cocktail filled with something fizzy. <gasps> Yeah, yeah. So she, yeah, she writes. She writes a poem which we don't see her read to him, but she reads it to another uh, woman in the pod. It's cute or and in dumb. The, like, yeah, it's yeah. it's silly. Um, but uh, she, she and she, I think she and Izzy do have a slightly deeper conversation. I honestly, I don't remember what it's about, but I just wrote down that they went a well, little conversationally she, deeper. She's basically like, I could just spill all this stuff to you, and like, I could do that, but like, I'm almost to the point where I can say that like I'm falling in love with you so like I think she was like bear with me like I'm getting there emotionally mm -hmm. um which I would make me doubt as just a very emotional person if I were sure about someone and they were at the point of like I'm getting to being able to say I'm in love with you or like falling in love with you I'd be like well we have a little mismatch. Yeah. It honestly reminds me of, um, I know you don't watch the Bachelor, Bachelorette franchise, so apologies for the tangent I'm about to go down, <laughs> but there seems to be this very like structured way that you have to communicate your feelings mm -hmm. on that show. And okay. like the ultimate is I love you, right? That's what they say like when they're getting engaged at mm -hmm. the end. But it starts with like, I could see myself falling for you. It's like, it's very sp specific verbiage. And then it's like, I think I'm falling in love with you. And then it's, I'm falling in love with you. And then it's, I'm in love with you. And then it's, I love you. And it's like, it's a very oh. specific scale. And it like, it's, so it feels like Stacy is like getting on that treadmill of like, okay. <laughs> I've never played I'm, that game. That's a lot of steps. It's exhausting. I'm like, just why? Either why is like, this I'm falling in love with you. I love you. Or like I don't know, we're friends. <laughs> like, yeah, but they're 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 starting to like. There's something to, there. We just don't know yeah. like how how promising is this for a real like long term relationship? Mm -hmm. TBD. Mm -hmm. And then similarly, I wrote, can Uche and Aaliyah keep trusting? Because like they have these rough moments, but then by the end of it, they seem to like be vibing again. And you're like, well, if they can always do that, that's a good sign. She confides in him about eating Splenda directly from the pack, which I I. I I had a childhood oh. friend who straight up did that. So like oh. those people exist. We, we've entered like a plateau at in episode three where like they're up, they're down, they're up, they're down. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, if this is their cycle, that's fine. As long as they're both like into this, but you're like, can they keep trusting each other? This is a push and pull. That's like, I don't know. Where's the line between like, we are humans who haven't met before and this is too hard. 
you know, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's so hard to tell. Yeah. And it's, so, it's, question it's, mark. they've thrown themselves into a really bizarre situation. So there are no, there are no clear answers. Right. So. And like you develop intimacy so much faster. And so then you're like more connected. And then you, mm-hmm. of course you could be like, just leave the pod. But like you've invested hours and hours and maybe dozens of hours in this person. There's, yeah, there's a sunk cost situation, which I think going back to Lydia, I think that yeah. plays into the whole Lydia Izzy thing. I'm like, you're just worried about it. This is a sunk, sunk cost fallacy. Just don't worry about it. Just move on. <laughs> it's yeah. okay. So um, before yeah. we get to Lydia, I had one note, which is, does everyone know now that JP is engaged? And like, what does he do all day now? Does he just sit in that kitchen? So, <laughs> yeah, I think that they don't want you to think about that too much because they're probably like mixing and matching That's with like cutting. That's all but... I was thinking about is like, what is he doing all day now? Yeah, you won't see, unless they're like in the background or talking to somebody else, you won't see JP or Taylor again together until the like, which presumably is going to be episode five, maybe like the outside world, like they're going to meet up and okay. everyone's going to meet each other face to face and drama this will ensue. So weird. Okay. I know. Uh, so next I said, I'm um, glad that Lydia has opened up to Milton and they're bonding. I, yeah, they seem to be reconnecting, which is good. Although I, do, I, I will say, I'm sorry. It made me laugh out loud and I wrote it down. What is your biggest like trauma in life? Maybe that's my new Tinder opening line. Yeah. What's your can, biggest can trauma? You put, can you put questions for people to answer on the dating yeah. apps? You can just be like, what's your biggest trauma? What is your greatest insecurity? Like ask the real shit. I can't think of anything to ask you. I'm sorry, my mind is blank. Just ask me the first thing that comes to your head. How big is it? Let's jump ahead to Izzy and Stacy. Wow. Wow. Brutal. Was anybody else shocked? I legitimately. I was shocked. So, are you ending things with me? Yes, I am. I I don't know how I feel about it because I think when I was watching um, Johnny and Chris, I was like, I want these two, these two are going to be together. Like no. I really felt, yeah. And then, well, until they sort of gave the like, sure. until he dropped the L bomb and she was like, eh. yeah. I mean, it was. I expected Izzy to at least like grapple with it for longer, but Me all too. of a sudden it was like, no, this is this is it. I'm yeah. shocked. I feel like there's a lot we didn't see in between there because I felt like he I felt like Izzy and Johnny were pretty solid and Izzy and Stacy were pretty solid. And the way he was just like, Well, I have a stronger connection. Goodbye. And I was like, oh Yeah. I don't think any of us expected that. Um or at least not that like quickly and surely. I was shocked at how real some of these emotions felt for how like produced and edited and bizarre this Mm -hmm. is and i said like i really sympathize with johnny's dilemma of like safety and attraction and risk and like how do you choose what's the right amount at the time for you you know what that is really hard Mm -hmm. and safety is not a bad word um and then so i had one comment because so like izzy and chris are talking and there's a little bit where they're like you're like, is Izzy really doubting or are they just editing it to look like he's doubting picking Stacy? Because I don't feel like he was wavering. Yes, but you're absolutely a weird right. Edit where it's like, oh, his hand is on his forehead and Chris is saying like, I don't know. I don't know. That was weird. I, I absolutely agree that was editing because it was like Chris or yeah, Chris was saying something and then Izzy like got up from the table, but it yeah. didn't really feel like a continuous shot. So that was Yeah, I think bizarre. it's just the edit. I think I think yeah. they're fine. I think he likes Stacy. But then <sighs> Woof. Johnny, I've been with you like the whole way. I really, really liked you. I think this was a huge error. You're like the safe choice, telling me everything I need to hear and makes me feel so secure. But in some ways, that's less exciting. Girl, no. No. Girl, you shot yourself in the foot with that, and you know it. That was (laughs) self-sabotage. Even if your feelings are genuine, which I'm kind of doubting, you need to take a day or three or a week before you approach this sweet man again and say, maybe I made a mistake. And you need to not say, like, I can see my life with you, and it bored me. 
but I really want to live that life. Like, she didn't exactly say that, but, like, that was the implication she, I got. She did. She essentially called him boring and safe. And, like, like you said, safety is not bad, but there's right. a way to express. I How about say, I feel safe with you. Yes. Not <laughs> You make me feel comfortable and safe yeah. in a way that is special. Mm -hmm. There are ways. That's why I think, like, she wasn't ready to have that conversation she was it was just no. fear based like shit i gotta find somebody now i'm alone and i have to leave the pods and like chris is my best choice and it was like girl you should have gone with your instincts in the first place if if izzy hadn't if it if izzy had said yes do you, do we really think that this conversation would be happening no, no she would be off with izzy like they would be married now like there she yeah. did not have thought about chris again and so yeah. i was like no girl no like this is and mm. I actually, and then, oh my God, it was uh, true to the name of this channel. It was very cringe to then watch Chris and Izzy comparing notes, which like, I, I'm not mad at that. Uh, go, go get the information sure. you need, but like, oh, I was like, girl, you, you did you not think they were going to talk? Well, okay, that too. It was all a chaotic mess. And I was it like, was just get out, just get out of this. It was like a, a very twisted game of telephone. And yeah, it, and to your point, it all could have been solved if she had just like taken a beat, yeah. like let everything sort of settle, let let Izzy and Stacy get engaged and then like maybe See have a conversation. I mean, yeah, yeah, we don't know the timeline. Maybe it really was like, okay, proposals are around I the corner. I have a feeling Let's... they were like, yeah. if you're going to secure somebody, it needed to happen today. And she mm -hmm. was like, well, shit, I haven't secured Chris, but like, that's the choice you made. Time Capital D for the drama. drama. And by that, I mean tiny D, no big deal drama. But like, <laughs> I wrote down, is this real drama? Um, there's something I have to tell you. Okay. This, <laughs> I have to say, this is what I was referring to with the excellent twist, okay. but not, not because I think it's a big deal at all. Okay. <laughs> like everyone, everyone should have been chill and it should have been fine. But <laughs> the way that it was set up, I legitimately was like, I was, I was very surprised and I'm really surprised. Shit. It is a girl that I have dated in the past. I'm sorry. There is no way that I think this played out organically. This is some oh, producer probably not. shit. But Love is blind. the way that they like, set up those dominoes, I was like, this I genuinely did not see coming. So I didn't either, but I was like, why are we talking about this? Because at first I was like, <laughs> they're exes. That's Lydia. And then it was like, they're kind of exes. They're not like significant exes in the way of like, we spent seven Christmases together. It sounds like they were on again, off again. That's that's the vibe For I like get. Months and like maybe they had some friends with benefits things. Anyway, we don't hear the rest of it until the next episode. Yeah, but and before we get to the next episode, I did write something else down that I thought was very funny, and I just have to say it. Yes. <laughs> Uche gives Aaliyah a journal, and I'm like, they all literally already. Oh yeah. Have why did Why did you give her another journal? Again, there's so many scenes cut <laughs> that, like, we have no context for anything. It made me laugh so much. I was like, this is the one thing she already has. <laughs> oh, um, it's delightful. Um, but yeah, okay, that wait. that bombshell was, like, they set it up, they set it up well, even it, though, It's not a point, bombshell, but they orchestrated everything yeah. about it to make it, like, maximum drama. And then I was yeah. like, is this real drama? It seems like not real drama. But then you get to the friend aspect of this shit and you're like, oh, if it was anybody but Lydia, it would have been like, OK, but because Lydia was the one and then it's like it's all making sense why she was oh, so fucking invested. Oh. 